Father, I thank you for your spirit and I thank you for your word. I thank you for your ability to break generational strongholds that have been in our families for years. Father, I thank you that with us, it will stop with me. It'll stop with us. And then the new crop will begin with our new seed. Father, let the sister who has not given birth to a seed understand that she can still give a seed. Father, I thank you right now that you're going to do something amazing. And once again, those who are watching and those who are listening, those of my brothers and sisters are in ATL, all of us here as we move forward. Breakthrough is here because this is the season of possibility. We believe. Now, Father, let your word cut like a double-edged sword. And Father, let me speak as, as if I've been in everybody's bedroom. And Father, let me speak with such a fervor, vigor, that those with demons will tremble. Surrender. Ask, what must I do? Say, amen. We learned in Isaiah 19 that a prophecy was given. And if whoever's going to read can go to Isaiah 19. Better yet, don't worry about it. 19, 1 through 17. And the prophecy was given. And he said, neighbor would fight against neighbor, brother against brother, city against city, kingdom against kingdom. And a lot of chaos would be in the culture of this particular group of people who represent me and some of us. And it was because they had become proud. Genesis 15 talks about the prophecy given by Abraham 400 years ago, or Abraham who said, that the African people, a smooth skin, would be enslaved for 400 years by a cruel master. When you really begin to study it, you'll understand that because our wisdom was so vast and whatever we become a part of, we excel and take over, including people's neighborhoods. Because our knowledge was so vast, we got, we started smelling ourselves. And so with that, if you stop and look at the time, you really need to pay, pay, pay attention. We are in a second, uh, another Noah day, the days of Noah where the people were giving into marriage and drinking and partying and having a good time. And there are many of us that have no idea what's happening. It's called the frog in the kettle. When you get a chance, Google the frog in the kettle experiment. And what does that frog do? As they put, you put him in a pot and you can put him in regular water and he will acclimate. And if you turn that heat on, he learns to, his system learns to acclimate to the temperature and he won't try to jump and escape. He'll boil to death. And so many of us are the same way. We think we're free, but we have no idea that our entire lives have been co-opted. And so with that, many of us have run away. We run away from ourselves and some of us have never known ourselves. And in us not knowing ourselves, we end up consulting idols, spirits, Instagram pages, 
I was thinking the other day, I said, now, everybody's a preacher. Everybody's a prophetess. Everybody's this. Everybody got something to say. Because it's all about opinion. And everybody's so ready to talk. Let me tell you, mind your business and stay off Twitter making comments about other people. Uh, get off of reading all that mess. It's filth. It's jamming up your spirit. Proverbs says a man should not meddle in the affairs of someone else. Why? Because it'll take you off course of your own life. So in Luke 15, it is about the lost sheep and it's about 15.4, what man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost, searching until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it. He, no, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he gets on, it's saying, with the shepherd, he comes in. See, see, Jay said something to me. He said, and several men kept saying, thanks for coming to get me. I don't tell because I don't let my deeds be that I do in secret. But if you knew how many people I've come to get and I've gone in, when you, listen, you got to understand when you are a soldier and you graduate to warrior, that means you're a first responder and you know how to go into the chaos while they're in it and say, come on out. Why? Because I didn't been there before. I watched my brother Tony go through the very attacks that I went through. And I watched him get pummeled, accused, misunderstood. And I watched him get beat down and beat down and beat down. And it was nothing I could do but tell him, this is a part of the preparation, my friend. And because your heart is in it, then God's got to allow you to be tested. And we must be aware of the spirit of Jezebel. Remember, my nickname is Jehu. And Jehu came against that spirit. I don't even know what I was talking. What, what was I talking? I got. Say it again. Lost sheep. Okay. Let's just jump back to wherever, whatever. Then. It goes to Luke uh, 15, 8, the lost coin. And the woman, she has 10 silver coins, each one equal to a day's wages. So she loses her paycheck. And when she finds it, she calls together the women and friends saying, rejoice with me because I found the lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents that changes his inner self, his or her old way of thinking, regrets past sins where they got trapped by their own deception, and then lives a life in a way that proves repentance. Lives a life that reprove, that proves what? Repentance. <sighs> Just say, I learned in Hebrew that repent is when you burn the bridge. And leave no room for coming back to that same place. 
And so repentance was, the word came from the cultural practice when they were fighting for land or doing whatever they had to do. And they wanted people who tried to post up on their land. They would just burn everything so that they couldn't come back. And repentance is when you destroy everything. You destroy the bridge because you know that you're not going back that route. God says the person who repents, <laughs> repents, that changes his inner self. For that purpose, you should be rejoicing. All right. So when the prodigal, prodigal son, the youngest son, takes off and spends all he had because he gets his inheritance, he's out there. And the last time we were together, we talked about when you get out there. See, some of us here out there, and you hear, excuse me, you hear just crazy lifestyle. Out there just means being off course from where you were supposed to be. Out there means you have swerved to the left or to the right, and you are no longer rooted on your path for life. And so when you are out there, you suffer. Now, what would make him decide, give this to me? Give this to me. It was his ego. All my suffering or loss is derived from an emotional attachment. Did you hear that? I had to learn in order to get into love, this is about a journey to truth. And that the stuff that are called the stuff that causes me pain is also making me aware that I am attached to it. Some of us are attached to careers, relationships, values, opinions, objects. And whenever any of this is threatened, we feel emotional pain. Because we feel that if that gets hit, it hurts us. <laughs> I watched the show. Parks and Recreation. And it was an episode I saw, and the, the, the black lady had just bought, she had a Mercedes Benz, so she was constantly referring to her Benz. And they were out doing some hunting and stuff. And all of a sudden, you heard a shot, and then you heard someone just screaming, blood curdling scream, bloody murder. And so when everybody came running, she was bent over at the back of her back window. It had been shot out by a little back passenger side window had been shot out, but she was screaming like she was going to die because we can become so attached to our image and our stuff because that's what makes us. See, you know you got, a, uh, you got something going on with your ego when it take you that long to get dressed to come out the house? Who are you dressing for, you or the people who look? As you can tell, I don't care what anybody thinks. And don't think I don't get looks of other brothers who, hey, choose other brothers looking at me. I'd be like, nope. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm glad I'm secure because I was standing somewhere and some millennial said something to me when she came out, her and her friend, about the way I was dressed or whatever. And so we was driving away and I was just talking to Jill and then 
She speaks so much truth. She said, hey, listen, this generation, they attracted to crazy. No, 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 I'm not saying that. I said, it's cool. I said, I'm just glad I'm secure. And I am crazy, so go ahead. <laughs> Are you being blessed, people watching? Are you being blessed? Is God talking to you? Let's keep going. Here was something I had to learn. When Duran thinks... He needs comes from an illusion, then he'll never be satisfied. As long as I mistakenly believe myself to be the I that I call myself, just listen. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And then because of some of the experiences we went through, we began to collect all our different experiences to create a persona that's called an ego. And so therefore, if you're not careful, you'll begin to think that you are some of your bad thoughts or some of your destructive thoughts. And so when you said, say it again, the person I think I am has emerged from an illusion. If I've been playing the game of the world, caught up in trends, caught up in having the same conversations everybody else has, instead of going to my own drumbeat, then the person that I have become that's going through all this suffering is the person I chose to be to survive this crazy system. And if I'm not careful, I believe that that person is me, the I is me, but it's someone I created. Just stay with me. What would be left if I could hand over all my attachments, my emotional attachment? If you want to change your relationship with yourself and your creator, you must trust the process of the undoing. Here I was saying, see, many of us, we keep saying, God, I keep praying to change. I keep trying to change. I keep trying to change. I want to change. Change, change, change. <laughs> we want to change. But what we don't know, and because no one has ever told us, and my daughter knows this through experience because she's watched us go through, we've taught her how to go through, that there's a season called the undoing. And the undoing is when you have, you have, there are things that must be undone for you to be a good daughter or a good son. What must be undone is my emotional attachments. When you're getting agitated, irritated, irked, whatever you want to call it, Some other saying, but forget it. And you're easily provoked. You've got an emotional attachment to something because that little thing should not elicit a daggone response like that. I know when I have an attitude problem and I tell people. I say, hey, I just noticed I got an attitude problem. And I'm just trying to let myself know because if, my, if I'm not careful, I'm going to say something.
I must break my emotional attachment. And whatever man think of, so he is to the things that I'm not aware of. This is why you can't be in people's business. This is why you can't be in everybody's script. This is why you have to make a decision to get yourself together, to get right. Because if you're not careful, you'll spend two, three, four, five, six, ten, twelve years walking past the same test that God was trying to get you to pass by doing your best because you were not present. So you believe attachment, you believe you know best. You got to get rid of that. The father knows best, not you. The moment you begin to look at your life from a higher, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you can test and improve God's pleasing and perfect will for you until you begin to look that, listen, you got a spirit. And the reason there's some blessings that don't seem to be totally connecting is because you ain't been connected. If the eye, when I wrote this, I just said, God, if the eye I accept is me, meaning my identity, and it's based on emotional attachments, then everything I desires, everything I avoid, will be absolutely dominated by these attachments. Does that make sense? I ain't going to try to say that again. Which leaves no space for the spirit of truth. If you are dominated by defending yourself, if you are dominated by projecting an image, then you cannot be with the truth because you can't be with a lie and the truth at the same time. And when there's no space for the truth, then conscious love cannot manifest. See, what God is trying to do is to get us to walk in love and get us to see love and understand love. No matter what I, my spirit wants, my ego does whatever it takes to protect its status. See, if you understand, I had to understand, Deron, you became, you became this I. That's what Deron, I just keep going with Deron. My name is Andre. But with Duran, when, you, when I created Duran, now God has morphed Duran into a man of God. But the intention was to change who I was because I was ashamed of my past. And once you've created that, when God goes to try to penetrate that flesh, that fleshly wall, that stronghold, you get caught up. Let me just say this. Truth often presents itself in the form of resistance. Truth often presents itself in the form of resistance.
because sometimes deep down inside God or wisdom, the universe is prompting you on what to do and you it feels right. But the truth is so powerful. The word it presents itself as. My voluntary surrender to stop resisting truth. I will find what my soul is searching for. The authentic love of myself. Did y'all get that? Please don't make me repeat that. The day Duran voluntarily surrenders to stop resisting the truth. When the truth is brought to my space. If I learn to stop resisting it but allow it to come into my space. Then what my soul, my spirit is searching for, which is peace. Once I stop resisting, then my authentic self can show up. Many of us don't even know who we are. Because we've never allowed the real part of us to be surfaced because we're always trying to survive. When we say there's a thin line between love and hate, it's not true. Love don't turn to hate. It's how you're experiencing what's happening that creates the hate. But love just don't turn to hate. One more thing. I'm wrapping up. I'm closing. Well, let me just close with this. Prodigal son was out there. His God, his father received him. And if you understand, it's a parable. What if he had had a girlfriend? And I, I just said, God, what if he had had a girlfriend or a woman on the side? Side piece. Or wifey. And they was having an argument. And she looked at him and say, why are you so mean all the time? He told me, what are you talking about? She said, why are you so mean all the time? And he'd be like, hey, this is who I am. Do you, do you see where you are? Why you, you, don't even, you don't even see yourself, do you? He's like, huh? You don't even see yourself. Why you walk like that? And he look at her, and he say something, and then she changes the world with. See, he got to a point that he thought he could walk like this and back it up. And his ego was too big, it was too wide, it was too strong, and he got himself all the way out there. And he began to tell her, I walk like this because I can back it up. But there's going to come a time when you're going to realize you can't back up nothing. You ain't running nothing. You ain't in control of nothing. And when life hits you, it hits you. You need a big worship. God has brought us into the ministry of reconciliation. And that is to reconcile us to himself. And restoration. 
This journey is about a journey to truth. When you find truth, that's when you're liberated into freedom. So here's is what I plead you, plead with you. Accept the truth of your behavior. Accept the truth. What I started with. My friend and my wife ain't going to say something to me to hurt me. The wounds of a friend can be trusted. Because they're going to speak truth to you. Sometimes they speak truth to you through their behavior and their response to you. But if you want to make it in this season, you're going to have to get off of that frequency that everybody's on, that ego. Yes, you need to have courage and you need to be able to have self-confidence. But the prodigal son had to come out of his ego and come into the truth. That's when you walk. Because you understand you're in the presence of God. Some of y'all have become so used to the anointing that's here. You don't even understand what God is doing for you. Through our ministry, we've taken every hit somebody could take. Why? Because we went after the loss. Amen.